to take this, here's what I'd like to know, what I'd like to pursue next is, what do we need, A, and B, what is intellectually tenable at this stage in the, the scientific discoveries cannot be unknown and the horrifying experiences of the 20th century cannot be unlived and should not be forgotten. Okay, two quotations. George Washington, and this is coming to you, George Washington farewell address, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principle. National morality, he's talking about an old fashioned idea, virtue. Tom Holland in Dominion, in the ancient world, quote, even skeptics who scorned the possibility that a fellow mortal might truly become a god were happy to concede its civic value, close quote. Whether you believe in Christianity or not, all three of you grant that that is our moral, that is, those are the moral waters we swim in. Do we need to behave as if it were true? How do you sustain the kind of civic virtue that everybody senses a decent society needs? Well, so this is, this is, this is the question that um, Nietzsche, who, uh, whose writings were taken, were given by the German government to soldiers marching to the, to the Western Front, that he has posed most kind of challengingly, I think. And essentially, he is, he is saying, can you have um, Christian values, Christian ethics, Christian morality without Christian belief? And his, his take, which has been very, very influential on me, is that communists, socialists, um, liberals, Nietzsche was particularly contemptuous of the, um, the English-speaking brand of liberalism, um, are essentially um, Christians monke. They, they, they think that they have cast off Christianity, but they haven't really. And Nietzsche's great parable is that God is dead, that right. his corpse lies in a great cave but that um, the corpse is so enormous that it continues to cast shadows and these flicker and change and, and we continue to see them. But that in the long run, this will generate convulsive process of change. Mm. And to, to be honest, that prophecy came true in, in the Third Reich. Um, it, came, it, it came true much faster than he thought. And I think the shock of that was so great for us that in a way, Nazism served to create a new mythology. So if you like, the shadow that is flickering on our current cave is actually, the, the shadow of God that's flickering on the shadow of the cave, that flickering on the cave is, is, um, is, is a Nazi one. Mm. And rather than, rather than the devil now, we have Hitler. Rather than hell, yes. we have Auschwitz. Yes. And that is why we are haunt, so haunted by the Nazis. That's yes. why Douglas just said, you know, I can't believe we got onto the Nazis already. Well, but I mean, we, we, we're it's, bound it's, 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 to it's, because, because yes. I think before the, before the Third Reich, people, even if they weren't Christian, they would accept Christ as the kind of the, the moral exemplar. And they would say, what would Jesus do? Mm. I think by and large, people now say, what would Hitler do and do the opposite? Yes. Yes. And People, people accuse, you know, the, the joke you go on, on, you know, you go on social media, within three seconds, people will accuse you of being a Nazi. This yeah. is the, the kind of the great joke. But the, it's, it's, it's similar to the readiness that, that people in earlier ages might have said, you know, to, to, to accuse people of being in hock with the devil or whatever. Yes. Um, and, and, but we, we fear and dread and loathe the Nazis for deeply, deeply Christian reasons. Because the question that none of us ever really pause to think is, well, what was so wrong with what the Nazis said? What was so, what's so wrong with being racist? What's so wrong with trampling down the wheat? By the way, our friend David Berlinski says the Holocaust was like the crucifixion. It was an event that changed everything. Yes. Which is fair. Of course. Right. I mean, um, in Celan's most famous poem, there's a terrible line, remember, Tod ist ein Meister auf Deutschland. Mm -hmm. Death is a master from Germany. All right, so... Back to you, but while I've got these two Englishmen all around this, uh, so Charles, King, now King Charles, gives a speech. Douglas is now an American. I'm not an American. I reside. You reside in America. You reside in America. Yeah. I, pa English I pass. Englishman in New York. You sting. You don't pass for one <laughs> second. Pass. You don't pass for one second. <laughs> Charles, King Charles, it is the year 2022, and the evening his mother dies. The evening of the day on which he has become king, he gives an address to the nation in which he speaks about 
the special relationship of the crown to the Church of England, mm. in which his own faith resides. The role and the duties of monarchy also remain, as does the sovereign's particular relationship and responsibility towards the Church of England, the church in which my own faith is so deeply rooted. This is what? A hopeless anachronism? Useful to the nation to continue some sense of continuity with the Christian, with the English Christian inheritance? What do you if, do with this? If I could try to tie that up with what you said earlier about, of course, Thomas Please. Jefferson took the, the view that the civic virtues of Christianity were such that you could pretend to do it effectively, even if you didn't do the believing. And there's an interesting, I mean, there are people who believe in belief. I might be one of them. It's, it's something that uh, people can do. It's a good thing. It's all, it's all the not, data, not a crazy position all the data the shows world, that right? you're going to be happier if you're a believer uh, and, and much more. Um, in, 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 in Britain, the established church has a very distinctive function, which is to effectively um, uh, own the pra uh, uh, own reign in how would you put it um, somehow tem yes temper the enthusiasm of religion contain it within the state it's, it was a very important uh, um, statement that he made uh, King Charles had in the 1990s toyed with this idea that he would rather than take the title defender of the faith would somehow be a defender of faith. Right. And this, and this, this is interesting because, of, of course, our own age has got a lot of sort of syncretic religion running through it. You know, um, hybrids of bits Absolutely. of Christianity, a yeah. bit of Buddhism, a bit of usually a bit of quite a large bit of Buddhism, and um, and there was a sort of idea maybe he's going to do that. In which case, several things, including the established church, would have actually been in serious trouble. Right. He resisted that. He did a thing I think which is correct is to say, no, this is the, the this is one of the titles I've inherited, and I'm the defender of the faith. And that's just what we've inherited in England, in Britain. Okay. So, so, I mean, just, just on specific, specifically on um, the mystery of uh, royalty and Christianity, I think that one of the problems for, for institutional Christianity for the churches is that in a way they've been too successful, mm -hmm. that their teachings have in a sense been nationalized. So particularly in, in European countries, perhaps more than the United States, but still in the United States, um, education, health, all these kind of things that previously were uh, the responsibility of churches have now, you know, th th they've been secularized. And in a sense, the church itself has been secularized. Mm. It's, it's, it's the, the instinct, I think, of uh, certainly in, in a national church like the Church of England, of many of the priests is to um, identify with the, uh, the kind of the preponderant ideology of the, of the age, which is a secular one. My own personal feeling is that that's a terrible mistake, mm. and that Christianity is nothing if it's not spectacularly odd. If 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 the strangeness, the weirdness, the mystery is not given space to breathe, and that comes across and, so beautifully in your writing, Tom. Well, but the, but, the, but so it the, struck the, the me. The preface of your book uh, it, it really mm. is jar jarring because if you swim in Christian waters and you forget just how how odd it is, how odd it but, is. But but yeah. it struck me very powerfully with the funeral of the Queen that um, people were being touched by the strangeness of it, mm. by the sense that you know, the queen was anointed. This is a ritual that goes back um, a thousand years in England, but ultimately goes back to ancient Israel, to, to David and to Solomon. Yes. And people felt themselves touched and moved by something strange that they didn't understand. And it was a rare moment where a sense of the weird was allowed to enter into the very heart of the state, and, and people were stirred by it. And I think that it would be a terrible mistake for the new king if he, you know, if, look, if presuming he wants the monarchy to survive, and indeed the Church of England to survive, if he was the stint on the str element of the strangeness within the coronation. I've I think got, he should absolutely I completely agree. But yeah. so, I've got a very quick observation as well, if I may. Uh, um, I completely agree with what Tom just said. There's a specific difficulty for Christians, which I, I, in certain other religions doesn't exist. And let me give an example, which is Judaism. Uh, uh, some years ago, I said to a rabbi friend, an Orthodox rabbi friend, I said, would you, uh, a rather rude question, but I said, would you agree that many people who come to your synagogue do not believe in God? And he said, uh, oh, most I'd have thought. And I said, well, what lesson do you draw from that? And he said, 
This year in the UK, 98% of British Jews will be celebrating the Holy Days. Now, I say that because in Christian terms, when we, we, well, there are reasons why Jews can be practicing without being believing. And there's a debate there a about believing take that and belonging. Well, yes, but what does it mean to be a Christian who wants Christian tradition to continue, mm -hmm. but cannot go to the church or thinks other people can go for them? All right. Well, this is what I appreciate about these two gentlemen so much is that they both have this deep appreciation of the importance of Christianity and, and genuine belief in God. And at least in Doug's case, Douglas's case, sorry, can't quite get themselves over the line to belief. I don't quite know where, where Tom stands on that, but I, I'm used to engaging these uh, very angry uh, atheists who hate Christianity and hate belief in God. But uh, in, a, in a piece I did for the Jerusalem Post last summer, um, <clears throat> eulogizing the great physicist Steven Weinberg, I talked about this, that there was the, the old new atheists, you know, the Richard Dawkins and Weinberg was one of them, uh, Sam Harris and uh, Christopher Hitchens, but there's a kind of new new atheist, uh, people who authentically lament the loss of Christian belief in the Christian, or, or a, of a theistic foundation, a Judeo-Christian foundation for our culture, but authentically also can't themselves come to belief and I, I have hoped that m my own work might open up that discussion in a new way so, because so. we've inherited all this baggage from the Enlightenment and the rise of scientific materialism, you know, figures like Darwin, Marx, and Freud from the late 19th century who so shaped the worldview of the 20th century. And yet I think there's, there is a, a very legitimate and genuine uh, intellectual uh, opportunity to, to reassess these deep questions apart from the baggage of the religious wars and um, you know, within Christianity, I think there is, there is a framework for explaining even how Christians can end up resorting to violence against each other because there is this deep uh, uh, teaching about the fallenness of man and that, that affects us all. The human nature problem is not eliminated simply because you believe in Christianity. But on the other hand, I think the materialists lack the intellectual framework to account for the extraordinary evidence that we have of design in the universe and of the, the, for the creation of the universe and these fundamental questions that we have assumed science has already uh, adjudicated are, I think, being reopened by discoveries that have frankly shocked us. And even Richard Dawkins has acknowledged this. Um, it, it, last summer he talked about the, the, he was knocked sideways with wonder at the discovery of the, the digital signal or the digital processing of information inside cells. It was not anything so, he expected from his blind, pitiless processes. Stephen, let me hit you. Yeah. And you know, I feel bad for Stephen, you know, in this clip and throughout this interview process. It seems that he's trying to get, you know, trying to get into the conversation, but it seems that Peter is directing most of his questions and qu queries to, you know, Douglas and to Tom. So let me start off with what Stephen was talking about, give him some credit and some due, and then go back to some points that were made by Douglas and Tom. So Stephen is arguing from the fact that as his conversion basically into Christianity, or let's say reversion uh, back to it to strengthen you know, his resolve in Christianity, he starts talking about these new New Age atheists like Hitchens and Dawkins and Sam Harris and others. And he basically says that they sort of lament or maybe they're sort of apologizing or apologetic in terms of Christian tradition, Christian values, Christian theism, but they just can't quite bring themselves to fully become a believer in the Christian faith, which is fine, which is okay. But he talks about that even they get, in his word, I'll, I'll, I'll use my terminology, starstruck. Even they, when they see some scientific discovery, or there's something that's just so absolutely perfect and precise and concise that is being, you know, that is, you can see and, and feel and think about and touch in the real world, but you have no idea as to its inner mechanism and how it works. 
so precisely and so perfectly that if just one thing were off, one tiny mechanism was off, it's not going to function properly. I mean, take a look, as he was talking about the digitalization, the messaging within the DNA cells and how the communication process needs to be perfectly fine-tuned by nature or by God. But they can't bring themselves to say that there's a creator out there that's in charge of doing this, that's in charge of everything, and that nothing is in charge of the creator. They can't get past that point. That has to come, folks, on faith. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Muslim or Buddhist or Taoist, that has to come from faith. That there is an ultimate being, a creator out there, that was created, that nothing... It was just there. You've got to wrap your head around that, which is what these new age atheists can't do, which is what is now being taught to school children, which is why you have an erosion of the faith, especially in Western democracies and the United States of America. In Western countries, it is not happening within the Buddhist faith as much. It's not happening within the Hindu faith as much. It's certainly not happening within the Islamic faith. No, but when Christian faith in Christianity, it certainly is because of the separation of church and state. And so when Douglas and Tom are talking about that you've got the Church of England, which is just sort of... Um, I guess I'd say it, it's just the architecture that you, from the outside, you look and you say, wow, that's a beautiful piece of work. The stained glass windows are gorgeous. The paintings, the statues are absolutely brilliant. They're amazing pieces of work. They're beautifully crafted. And it's pristine. Let's just look at it from afar. We don't want to enter into it. We just want to see it from afar. Which is what Douglas was referring to with the Douglas, uh, with the rabbi. Saying that 98% of British Jews, they're going to be celebrating the holidays. They might not do anything the rest of the year won't go to a synagogue, won't do anything else that would be considered Jewish tradition. But for the holidays, they're there. That's just like Muslims who go to Friday prayers. Don't do anything else during the month, but they're there for Friday prayers. Or they're there celebrating the Eid, just like a lot of Christians. Celebrate Christmas, celebrate Easter. But you know what? The other 50 weeks... Out of the year, they're not in church. So this is what's happening, folks, especially within the Western face, with you know the Judeo-Christian uh, tradition, Judeo-Christian religion, Judeo-Christian philosophy, what do you want to call it? It is being slowly and slowly, um, you know, things are happening in terms of where it's just... Uh, to try to get people to come back to the faith is very, very difficult. And then with the advent of social media and these new age atheists and people being taught this and children being taught this at a, you know, at, at the secular level, that there is no creationism, there is no God. It's all, it's all, you know, there's a way to explain it without a creator. And so you've got this thing happening at an early level with children, not enough faith or religion is being taught to them even at home, where are they going to go to? Anyways, folks, we hope you um, enjoyed watching this video, seeing these three great men back and forth, just to 
let you know you're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser. If you've done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us. Check out our video links above and below. Share your thoughts as well in the comments. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.